Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to talk about how to improve the performance of Quantum Espresso by including parallel computing library in the compilation process. Uh, in the last hands-on tutorial, I have shown you how to compile Quantum Espresso in the most simple way, that is to keep everything default. And it turns out that Quantum Espresso uses the GNU compilers and the internal math libraries without any um, uh, parallel computing library because there is no comp uh, parallel computing library uh, now on this computer. And what I will show today is that we make one step forward, we uh, include the parallel computing library, and the parallel computing library that we will use is MPICH. On uh, Ubuntu, the installation of uh, MPICH is actually quite uh, simple. What you can do is to to say sudo apt get install mpich and it, it will automatically download everything for you and now it is uh, it is finished you can check by saying mpif90 it checks the um, um, the version of Parallel, parallel computing version of uh, Fortran compiler and you see that this is MPI for, for MPI CH version yeah. so this is um, already uh, already uh, success, uh, sus successfully installed um, what, we, what, what I can do now is that we keep the folder that we, uh, we had last time because I still want to run some benchmarks and comparison with the serial compilation we change we change the name to be the first compilation and the serial and we copy the folder to a new folder which we call uh, mpich version and we go inside the mpich version folder and clear the screen and uh, and now we list the files so the folders and files they are, they are already they are the same but uh, but everything is already compiled we want to clean everything so you can run make clean this command uh, actually removes all of the um, of the already compiled uh, programs of Quantum Espresso and only keep the source code so that we can uh, we can do the compilation uh, in newly. So now the first thing we do is to configure. One thing you can add is enable parallel but this is not, le not necessary because automatically it will search for parallel you know, com uh, computing libraries and we just run it. and success. Okay, so to check wh whether it f already finds the things or not, we can go into the folder and and uh, open the make.ink, uh, yeah, which we talked about last time. And what we are going to see is uh, is basically here. This MPI F90, that is the um, uh, compiler, that is the parallel computing compiler for the um, uh, Fortran code. And you see that last time it was G-Fortran, but, but now it's MPI-F90, F which, uh, which successfully caused the um, uh, compiler in MPI-CH. So this is fine, this will generate a parallel computing part. So what, uh, what I will do is to make minus J2 PW. So um, you may remember that make PW means that compile the subprogram PW, and minus J2 means that we compi uh, the compilation happens on two cores parallelly. So this will uh, this will make make it more time efficient. So I will start, and and during this compilation process, I will also try to. Uh, talk about something else, but um, if you if you don't um, I like if you are not interested, you can just uh, scroll down to um, um, like fast forward to the to the end of the um, compilation. Um, 
So what I want to talk now is, is that there is a, there's another feature of, of terminal is that you can run several terminals together. One, th one thing that uh, one way to do it is to right click and a uh, new window and, and then you have a new terminal. Or you, uh, you use the uh, keyboard shortcut Control alt t it will also run a new terminal. You can, you can have as many terminals as you want. And uh, one, one thing that you also that may also be very useful for, uh, for, for the use of quantum espresso later, because later you will also use the parallel computing capabilities, and, and you sometimes you want to check uh, whether quantum espresso runs on one core, two cores, or four cores. The, um, the very useful command is called top. Yeah? Top is basically the resource manager, so something like the resource manager in Windows. Um, and, and you just run top, and you will see uh, what are the processes that, um, that, you are, uh, like, that, that are running on your uh, CPU. Uh, th the first thing, th this is the uh, screen recorder that I have, but uh, you will see that we have this F951. So there are two processes of of uh, compilation of Quantum Espresso. So those are the uh, compilation of Quantum Espresso. Yeah? And uh, the reason why there are two processes I is that we use make minus j2. If you if you have more cores, you can try minus minus j four minus j. I don't know. I don't know whether it ma makes sense to try minus j eight, but uh, I guess minus j four will make it uh, more uh, more time uh, time e e efficient. Yeah. And I if you if you run quantum espresso uh, parallelly later, you will also see uh, different processes here, which I will also show later. And just clear the screen. <coughs> and uh, and usually on on Linux it's, it's much uh, much easier to to let's say to program in Linux than than on Windows. The reason is that uh, you have all of the um, all of the all of the tools at hand. You have G Fortran. You have, uh, for example, Python. Okay. Okay. And uh, you have GCC. So you have the compiler for uh, for uh, for C language, for Fortran language, for Python. You can f have everything. Yeah. And the and the easy thing I is that you can also see from here, the the command is very simple. Yeah. In the in, in the most simple case, you just need, uh, for example, G Fortran. And you have some some Fortran source code that you write, and um, and you want to output it to uh, let's say dot out. Let's say this is not in, but uh, test dot out, test dot f. So this well, uh, let's say this is not not out, but dot o. Yeah. So this will already uh, compile your your source code test dot f. To uh, and and name it as uh, test dot o. And this not only works for for G Fortran for Fortran code, but it works the same for, let's say, for C code or C plus plus code. So everything is quite um, it's quite convenient if you if you program in Linux. You don't have to go to different IDEs, but of course there are there are also m many nice things about IDEs in in, in Windows. I, for example, I w I personally prefer to code in Windows, um, co code Python Python in Windows because uh, the IDE PyCharm is is very uh, powerful. I, I really like it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You also see that here you can also do uh, do Python calculations calculations here. Okay. So um, you see a similar amou uh, uh, amounts of warning as as last time when we keep everything as default, but uh, but don't worry. This will this will not hurt. 
if it doesn't stop, um, it, it, it will be okay. One thing that you will notice that it changes, because now it's like MPI F90, so it tries to compile the Fortran, Fort, Fortran part uh, in the parallel computing uh, way. So, so this is different. Another thing is that uh, usually, usually when when the computer or or the CPU vendors they when they uh, when they try to, for example, when they try to make advertisement, they usually say, "Okay, we have uh, I have eight cores, or I have uh, four cores," but usually it means that eight threads or four threads. So, so the actual core number of the of the CPU may may not be what you what you get on the specifications or what you get from the advertisement. At least then that is what what I have on my computer. So, for example, on my computer, this is the old version of ThinkPad, uh, which which like when I bought it, it says four cores. But but in the end, this is just a two-core CPU with uh, with four threads, and um, which means uh, that it doesn't make sense to 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 do parallel computation on on, on four cores, right? Because in in the parallel computation, you can specify how many cores the uh, the program use, and usually um, usually the uh, the the performance goes goes up at the beginning, but goes down um, after after some point. So, if for example, if you have um, four core C four core CPU, four core eight thread CPU, the performance may may be better if you if you use uh, parallel computing on two cores, maybe four cores. I, I I don't know. So this you have to try. Yeah. So basically, it, it it doesn't it doesn't mean that uh, you always have to use uh, use the maximum number of cores and that um, that is that is available on your CPU. Plus, the 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 number of cores in, uh, available in in the ad advertisement may al may also not be the true uh, number of cores in your CPU. You better also check that. If you specify a, a number that is larger than the total number of cores in your in your CPU in the parallel computation, um, your uh, basically your performance will be much worse. Okay, so now it is uh, it is finished. There is no there is no warning, and uh, uh, the same as last time, we we'll go to the test suite and try to bench uh, not benchmark, but we we'll try to run the code. So make uh run tests pw serial we we'll first try to run the serial test okay maybe this time it is it is better to to say we we, we get a timing here okay so i will i will stop it and uh, we run the code again, and uh, I will start a timer. Okay, so now it starts. Uh, it is good that um, that it, it it passed the first two tests. The third one would be a little bit longer, but uh, but doesn't matter. So we will wait uh, and see how much time does it cost for the fir uh, for the first five uh, examples, for example. Yeah. So it is also uh, it is also running, and what you um, you will see here, this LSDA is a um, is a functional for for DFT, which I will uh, I will also cover later. Third one is passed. Fourth one is passed. Okay, now it's around one minute. Um, in the in a, in a later tutorial, I will I will do this more uh, precisely. But but let, let's say we we just want to get a get a feeling now. So from the first to the fifth uh, example, it costs more or less one minute. 
And then what we want to try is to try parallel computing version. I'll reset my timer and start. This uh, example is also quite slow. I don't know whether there is any performance, an um, increase in perfor performance, because for the parallel computing, you should also um, set some uh, some environmental parameters to let it run correctly. But it, but, it, but as you can see here, the it also passes the parallel test. So now it's uh, fifty seconds. It, it is a little bit faster, but it's not as fast as as what I what I would thought, but um, but you get uh, you get the idea that um, that it passes the parallel computing test, which uh, which uh, w while the the previous version doesn't uh, doesn't pass. Okay. So what I want to see here is the environmental environment variables. So so this defines the um, how many cores your uh, your program uses. And you see that it it runs four cores, so it should should be okay. So uh, l let us let us just run run the code again. Uh, run the parallel computing benchmark, and we check with another terminal. We check with top, and you see indeed for CP. Yeah, parallel computing works. Be better um, performance than for <laughs> for my for my computer. Uh, so, so what I'm going to do now is to set it to two cores. Oh. If if you didn't see, it. okay. Mm. So it seems that our parallel computing version of Con Espresso runs uh, normally. And um, the reason, uh, like it gives a slightly better performance, but uh, since I don't have many cores, and also I um, I need to record the screen, so uh, so it, it doesn't it doesn't really uh, benefit from from the multi multi core uh, capability, but um, that is slightly better. Okay, in 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 other cases, if you if you don't have I other applications running, or you if you have more cores, the the, the ad advantage will be uh, much better. Okay, so uh, thank you for watching today's tutorial. If you if you find it helpful, if you uh, like the tutorial, um, I would really appreciate you uh, press like or subscribe button. Okay, so thank you very much, and uh, see you next time.